Hello everyone, how's it going today? Happy Friday! We are back for some more Lego building, continuing on with our Orient Express. We got uh, bag number eight to go. <coughs> this is what we got uh, so far of the dining car. So let's go ahead and put it up here for now. I'm doing pretty good. Tried to go get some super cheap Lego today. Went to a store on Wednesday uh, that was going out of business. They had Lego marked down to 40% off. So I got a few things. And then yesterday I heard that they uh, dropped it down to 75% um, off. And by the time I got there, there were like a handful of uh, the this sized bag left, Lego-wise, and an incredibly long line. So, I saved money. I saved money. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Alright, so, let's see. We've got, we've got our labels here. Go ahead and set these aside. Not sure. Like, I know that there was an error with the original uh, release of this with some of these, and I don't know if they got fixed. So we've got... Uh, Sofia in Istanbul. We got uh, Vienna in Budapest. Bucharesti and Biograd. And Paris and uh, Munchen? Munchen? I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know how to pronounce these in in their their native uh, pronunciations. Obviously, it's Vienna. Uh, Bucharest, Belgrade, and Munich. And those those are the, uh, I know the English names for them. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and start on our roof. Went and got a laptop yesterday, so I had fun uh, getting stuff transferred to it. Nice. Hope you're looking forward to uh, using that. I use a laptop for my everyday stuff, but uh, a desktop for uh, recording and streaming and stuff. Alright. So this is a very long, uh, <laughs> a very long construction here. Did hear that um, the uh, the next modular is going to be a like a, a bed and bed uh, bed and breakfast kind of uh, set. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what that'll look like. I have not seen pictures yet. Your desktop was having issues with the uh, computer screen. Oh, that's unfortunate. My laptop isn't super duper old. I think it's like, it is getting on to four or five years at this point, though. Uh, not as old as my previous one that it replaced. That was, uh, I think that got up to 11 years old. <laughs> uh, but I'm beginning to get some, some burn in. So it's probably getting close to time for me to start thinking about a new machine. Okay, 
There we go. We got our uh, two by three uh, curved slopes on. Flip it over for some one by eight plates. And the overhead lights, in, which are two by two boat studs in trans orange. Yeah, but I'd rather not spend money right now if I don't have to. So I may wait until it becomes untenable. Alright, let's see. Make two of these with uh, two by four tiles. Like right now, it has it, it. also has a uh, kind of a minor, um, not exactly a freezing issue, per se, but like every once in a while, it'll just like give a slight hang for a half second, just long enough to uh, miss like a keystroke when I'm typing, and it's annoying. The fun thing is when it misses the keystroke of shift. And it doesn't realize that I <laughs> let go of shift. That one is always amusing. Acanthochronology? Um, let's see. That is... I'm trying to remember what a cantho is. Uh, dendrochronology is the study of tree rings. What is a cantho chronology? I'm sh I know that it's going to be one of those things where you, you say it and I'm like, oh yes, yes, that is it. I remember now, kind of thing. Cactus spine study or thorn. In terms of uh, getting the age of a cactus, oh, okay, growth. No, I can see that being with chronology. Okay. All right, and another two by two here. And a one by one cylinder tile there. All right, so we got the top part of the uh, of the roof, but now we need to do some stuff on the underside. So dark blue, two by uh, one by twelve, and uh, dark blue one by ten, and brown one by twelve. You know what? I bet that we're going to get... No, maybe not. Let's see. Uh, there could be something there. Hmm. It's going to be interesting to see how that works. go. I see. Okay. That was not what I was expecting, but I see how that is working. Okay. That. Get that. And get that. Let's make the second one. I mean, basically, if you're going to study anything, it can be an ology. Hmm. 
You could have the study of Lego, and it could be Legoology. Or Legology. Probably Legoology would be uh, better. Kind of like Zoology. All right. Olology, the study of ologies. Yes, see, exactly. You could do that, too. <laughs> there we go. Get you in there. Okay. And we get our curved slopes, inverted slopes. And howdy, uh, Lord Canis. How's it going? And then there could be Lugiology, the study of Lugies. Your favorite is uh, cryptozoology. <laughs> go and see and then there's also cryptozoology uh, which is the study of animals in crypts that's how it works all right let's go with that one and then that one then that one and then finally that one. Okay. Oops. My mistake. The destination size Istanbul. Why doesn't it say uh, Constantinople? Because it's not Constantinople anymore. It's Istanbul. It was Constantinople. There we go. All right, and we do the same thing. There we go. There we go. All right, so we got the uh, the roof of the car on. Very nice. And now we get to make the uh, the trucks. That's the wrong bag. I want bag number nine. Belgrade. That one is Belgrade. They have redone the train wheels. Interesting. Okay. like this is not what they were like for the crocodile locomotive so they they uh, used to have a metal axle that would fit in there and then you'd pop them in and now they don't that's interesting mm, water 
Okay. There, uh, one by twos with bars. There we go, and there we go. Does that use? Does that roof use a uh, one stud flat two by two and a, a round tile to simulate an oversized one by one brick? Uh, it's not an oversized one-by-one -one brick. It's just a roof decoration. Um, I think you you would want more than... Well, you might just... One, one plate might be good. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I don't think... Like, it, it would be too small, though. Like, the stud in that kind of thing would be uh, too small. You'd need something a little bit larger, probably about the size of the, um, well, like, maybe this. Well, not just deep enough, but, but wide enough. Like, this... This would be a little bit better in terms of getting the um, the size right. Because with this one, you basically have uh, fully half the underside of the, the brick. And I don't think that... Yeah, you do not have ha like um, a quarter of a brick and a quarter of a brick on the top and bottom of a... Uh, like around a, a stud. All right, two by two plates. And some wagon tongues in case, you know, you need to do a replacement on the Oregon Trail. All right. And Azure 2x6 and 2x2 two two turntable tiles. Lose two oxen. Your medieval town square arrived today. Nice. Congratulations. Hope you enjoy building that one. It's a really nice one. only carry 300 pounds of food. Back in my day, I could only carry 100 pounds of food back to the wagon. And it was all cornflakes. Two six packs of D&D uh, &D minifigures. Nice. You get anything uh, that you really wanted? Howdy, Seelin. How's it going? First one I had Tasha, Strahd, Zostom, Lady of Pain, Gith Warlock, and Mind Flayer. Ooh. Got all of the villains there. That's pretty impressive. Second one had the exact same. Yeah, there, there's been some rumors that they are making the uh, um, the six packs have the exact same thing in them. But I, I don't know. I, I haven't gotten any of the six packs because um, I don't... I don't like that randomness. I'll just go to a store if I want specific ones. Um, and as I normally do, get a case for making sure that I get everything. Just for the cornflakes, dude, you present dancing dinos and horses for pick pickles. Yeah, you've just created like a, a stench around them, and now they're dying of... Uh, you know, they're, they're, those are their death throes from the, uh, the pickle stench. I can't believe it. 
Can't believe you'd you'd let the horses uh, horses and uh, dinos die from that. It's terrible. It's terrible. I guess some people just want to watch the world suffer in incredible pain from uh, from pickle odor. You know, one by two, and a ball joint. They most definitely do not love the smell of pickles. Okay, I'm an archosaur. I know what dinosaurs like. And I know Lego horses. They're a friend of mine. Pair of gold, one by one, plates with round ends and bars. When your brother got to two six packs a month or so back, he had that six in one of them, and in the other he also had Strahd, Zostom, and Mind Flayer, but also Aarakocra Ranger, a Dwarf Barbarian, and the Elf with the Gold Sword. The Elf Bard, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's why I just get a case, and uh, if I really want individuals, I'll just go to a store. <laughs> Like, uh, I do not like playing the random game. I like the, uh, the black saucers as the, um... I don't know what those parts are. They're not the hitches themselves, but they, they like, uh, represent the... I guess they're kind of like bumpers. You're gonna rely on individuals now, where you can scan them? Alright. Now, the, these are making some interesting designs for the trucks, but... You like the boxes of six packs coming? That's fair enough. I actually have not seen the uh, seen those boxes uh, or the boxed minifigs yet. All right, get you on there. What do you like about the boxes? There we go. Also, I'm not going to lie, I miss the dedicated... Uh, train parts. Now, I haven't gotten any recent trains, so I cannot actually say how the um, how they actually uh, work these days. They may still be using the, the real train parts. And I just don't know it. Howdy, not a rogue AI. How's it going? There we go. And then get to use the 2x2 uh, two two with curved cutout tiles here. Which are pretty cool.
Just uh, woke up from an unintended nap. Well, that's okay. All right, get uh, black butcher's knives. There we go, and then snap in the wheels. Okay, I was expecting an actual snap, and that did not really snap. Alright, there we go. Oh, I do need to make two of these. Well, shucks. I thought that they were going to be slightly different. <laughs> Just a nice size box for odds and ends with a closing lid. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, the uh, the cases are not that great these days. The the box itself, um, the contents are wonderful, but the the box itself, eh. I didn't see that Azure one by two. That's why I thought there was going to be something different. Or the brackets. There's the brackets. I mean, I guess it's kind of nice that they're doing something different for the uh, connections. Um, using different pieces and stuff rather than just using the uh, default train parts, if they even still are. But it does make me want to go check out some of the new or recent train instructions and see if they're still using the classic train parts. Or... I guess they really aren't exactly classic now, but... Because they have definitely varied a lot over the years. But you know what I mean. go, and then over here, and there. For this D&D run, you really wouldn't mind duplicate minifigs, except they had to give you duplicates of all four uniques. Yeah, that's the thing, is like, I would want, um, well, I do want a lot of uh, um, duplicates of the kind of PC races, Whereas I don't want as many duplicates of the uh, the unique figures. I don't I don't need that many. Um, the Mind Flayer. That's that's one that I want. Lots of dupes of. Howdy, Kinshir. How's it going? Go and get those there. It goes. That's good. Okay. Got that on. Now we get the cleavers just go to town on mine players there we go and then 
clip in the uh, the wheels. Just learned that Saturday from 1 to 4 a.m. the internet company you're with is going to do maintenance. Well, are you planning to be up for that? I hate it when my com my, when my internet company does uh, maintenance when I'm awake. All right, so uh, the turntables are going to fit into the four by four tiles there, or uh, cylinder plates there and there. All right. Next stop, Vienna. After a wonderful evening of fine dining, uh, it was time to find the sleeper carriage. Okay. So, yes. All right, so this is going to be the uh, connection here. So we have a 1x2 with a, a ball joint, and it's very loose. I'd kind of want to test that out on some of the other ones, but um, they certainly have not made these in, in black very often. And a black saucer. Very cool. Okay. I mean, you can swap out the hands, too. All right, so here we have our, um, our dining car. The roof does pop off, so we can take a look inside. There is the closed door on that side. Now we have a connection for the uh, car in front. And the dining car is done. All right, put that to the side. You're going to want to start with bag number 10. Okay, it does say put that on the rails, but I'm not going to do that right now. Could be worry about snapping them. That's fair. I did do some hand surgery at the Lego store because they had dark blue uh, classic space torsos, uh, but they did not have dark blue hands. So I dug through until I found some uh, torsos with uh, dark blue hands and swapped them. All right. So, I need another two dark red 6 by 16s Put those up there for now. All right, we make a hand cart. It is neat to get a kind of a, a brick-built hand cart, although I do miss the classic hand cart. That said, I do have I do have uh, a lot of those. Only in red, though. Uses the same wheel. Gray ingot. There you go. So the downside of this hand cart is that, like, it's, it's not really going to stand up that way very well, and y you have to move it, like, at a at a real uh, at a fairly steep angle, or a, a low angle, I should say. Whereas the uh, classic red handcart piece didn't really have that problem. Okay, we can make the trunk. All right, so that has a trans orange. I guess this is a um, piece of amber, and I wonder if this is from the, like, the uh, Indiana Jones, uh, not Indiana Jones, from the uh, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World stuff. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. So there's a little mosquito in there. 
That's pretty neat. There we go. I'm definitely going to clone dinosaurs. I would absolutely clone dinosaurs if I could. I mean, who wouldn't, really? Does look like a like the mosquito and amber you got in a uh, Jurassic Park poly, poly bag. Nice. I have not gotten one myself. All right, there we go. Put that on there. And inside the two by two box, get a couple crowns. And we need a sticker. Dinosaurs are not real life dragons. Dinosaurs are their own thing. There we go. Put that on top of the uh, chest, and we have a letter that is, oh, it says top secret. Tied off and says top secret. There we go. It's perfect, just leave that out like that. That's how you know it'll stay safe. Grab that poly bag just because it caught your eye and had some guy, baby raptor, dinosaur egg, and an amber brick and some uh, little structure like an incubator. Yeah, I haven't seen too many of the uh, the poly bags, unfortunately, so I have missed out on some good ones. But that is okay. Flip it over. Blue six by six. Black four by fours. Hey, little bunny, how's it going? Ah, details, details. Who cares? Movies have proven, proven, I tell you, that that kind of thing is completely unnecessary. The dinosaurs will just rampage around and eat people, and it's fine. It's fine. No one gets hurt except for the eaten people, and it's fine. Dinosaurs and dragons are related, though. Um, kind of, kind of hate to break it to you, Bahama, but but uh, dragons aren't real. They're all a figment of my imagination, just like all of you. Okay. Let's get a one by four plate in there. And then the uh, white two by two tiles with cutouts.
All right, and then the flesh one by one quarter cylinder tiles. Mm, flesh. I mean, you know, with stone to flesh spells, you never have to worry about food ever again. So like that tiling reminds you of uh, something the uh, Rivendell set did. Yeah, but the Rivendell didn't have these pieces yet. I don't think. Maybe they did. Now I can't remember. But yeah, no, this is great tiling. I love the, uh, um, the two by twos with uh, cutouts. Two by two, one by six. Some one by ones with round ends and dark orange. Brown one by one tile, brown one by one quarter cylinder tile. And a dark orange two by two round, uh, two by four round end tile there. Okay. Then right here, get some more tiling. Also, that can go. Knock that over. That up there. Now I do love it when they do uh, tiling. It's very nice. So you're having an empty stream that makes you lonely enough to uh, pretend to have viewers? I mean, when you're the only entity in existence, then you, you gotta you gotta get company where you can. You know? Alright, so uh, that is a plain 2 by 3 That is a number 21344. Four. Right there. Exactly, solipsism. I think, therefore you are. Okay, we are not using the these printed bricks, at least not yet. There's the Orient Express. I mean, the only thing that I can be sure of is my own existence. Ergo, none of you actually exist. I don't make the rules here. Can my Figmentia make believe your kitty is less bitey then, please? No. No, I can't. Sorry. It's, uh, that is not within my pa my powers. Alright, we got our Orient Express logos there and there. Alright. Witcher Litz. I have probably mispronounced that horrendously. But that's not my fault, that's uh it's French's fault. French should make more sense like English does. <laughs> All 
I'm just going to drive so many people away with these uh, comments. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see. We got our bracket. We get dark orange one by two plates, and then gold one by two plates. Hey, my existence is wonderful. Next up, Budapest. Steaming along the Danube River towards Budapest, the water shone like gold. Just like these uh, parts of the train. <laughs> You're wondering what sort of trauma birthed you now? Well, you know, I mean, I gotta have variety. It's the spice of life. Okay, so that is that bag done. All right, so spare parts. We've got a brown one-by-one one tile, dark orange one-by-one one round end tile, uh, brown one-by-one one quarter, uh, brown and flesh one-by-one one quarter cylinder tiles, and a gold one-by-one one cylinder tile with uh, crown printing, and trans red and trans green gems. Nice. All right. Bag number 11. <laughs> Old confirmed designer. <laughs> That's fine, you can go on the floor. All right, dark orange uh, four by four tiles. Another one by one up here. Well, yeah, I do know what you mean. I don't really have a personal favorite uh, in terms of the um, the factions, though. I have some some ones that I don't like. There we go. Get that on there. Side studs. Two one by one blue, dark blue plates. Oh, nope, they're in here. <laughs> Yours is not the faded. And it's also been a little while since I've uh, read up the uh, the factions, so. I think the one that I would never play is the Athar. Alright, two one by one bricks. There we go. And that goes right there. Glossed over the list in the new source book. You notice they uh, kept most of the same ones from 2nd edition? Oh, I, I haven't even seen what they did or did not keep. Glanced over. 
Dark blue 1x5 plate. Uh, gloss is more about, uh, like, if you gloss over a flaw, like, you gloss over a flaw, you glance over something to get a quick overview of it. So like if you're like in, in a conversation, if, if something gets glossed over, uh, someone's basically saying, oh, don't worry about this, this element kind of thing. There we go. And get that one on there. All right, and then our four by four. Okay, there is the mold mark. Four by four tile, and these are the same. This makes me want a Lego Flamingo. They do not have Lego Flamingo. Well, no, not a Flamingo, Peacock. That's a, these are Peacocks, sorry. I don't know why I was thinking because they do have a Lego uh, Flamingo. Plastic Flamingo, but it works. There we go. Let's zoom in. Okay, where where did my uh, zoom thing go? There it is. So we've got some nice, uh, nice Lego peacocks. We've got our classic uh, flowers there. These are the the large palm leaves that are actually small in this. Uh, the seven petal flower, and of course the three leaf plants up there. But yeah, I, I'd love a, uh, a Lego peacock. That'd be great. Okay, zoom back out. And that gets on to the panel there. All right, and then we will flip around to the other side and do the same. Okay, there's a mold mark. You're assuming that wall panel is accurate to uh, one on the real deal? Uh, somewhat. I mean, I think they, they took liberties with what they decided to show. Wouldn't surprise me if the individual cars ha have different uh, designs as well. 
Okay, so we are going to make two of these. Like, I've never seen the uh, the paneling, but yeah, I mean, there is paneling, wood paneling in them. Still say it needs a Poirot? Yeah, that would be, uh, I'm pretty sure that would be a, a license thing, though. I don't think they could fake it. I don't know that Agatha Christie's books are out of uh, copyright yet. And it could even have been an issue with the, the current licensor. They, they may have said, absolutely not. Can't be too hard to put one together. No, I don't. I don't think it would be uh, that difficult. Got to use the midi legs, though. There's a couple different. Uh, um, a couple different uh, mustache designs that you could go with. Release the license to make uh, underwhelming movies despite having Branagh. I mean, the David Suchet one ones are the best and always will be. Just like there will be no better Holmes than uh, Jeremy Brett. There we go. Okay, one there, and the other one here. Which isn't to say that they shouldn't make more or something like that. I'm just saying that. Well, the best has been done. <laughs> Mom told you an anecdote about that guy, that at some showing or other, Christy met him and said he didn't look like Hercule Poirot, and he said something like, to all these people, I am Hercule Poirot. About David Suchet? I don't know that... I think Agatha Christie was dead by the time she, he took the... Um, the role. And maybe Peter Ustinov in, in the original... Um, No, 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 no. It was not Peter. U Peter Ustinov was on Death on the Death on the Nile, and uh, Albert Finney, I think, was uh, was on uh, Orient Express. David Suchet is a. Um, He's a very, like, I, I'm pretty sure he's a, a very generous person. I do not think that he would say something like that to the creator of the character. Agatha died in 76. Yeah, so it could not have been 
uh, Suchet. It would have to be Ustinov or um, uh, Albert Finney. Probably Ustinov for Death on the Nile. That That's going to be my guess. Uh, I don't know that much about um, Ustinov. Uh, I don't think Finney was that... Like, I've heard he's pretty, you know, pretty nice person kind of thing. I don't know my, uh, about Ustinov, though. Should be pretty easy to uh, verify on, like, IMDB or something. I mean, I do know that she hated the character by the time <laughs> she was... she decided to stop writing about him. Ustinov's death was 78. I mean, that doesn't... That doesn't, uh... Make a little bit of difference there. <laughs> oh, Death on the Nile. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it would have. Then I guess it had to be uh, Finney. I thought Death on the Nile was 74. Eh, I don't know. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if, uh, like, any, any character that you write about and kind of have to write about for monetary purposes because they sell so well and your, your, your publisher is like, uh, no, no, you, you need to keep writing, writing this character. Uh, you know, it's, that's... I can I can understand uh having that feeling of not not liking that anymore. Goes through the five E Planescape book. Looks like they all got the OG factions, just some have been rebranded. What have been rebranded? I mean, if she really said something like that, then I'm sure that's going to be in, like, IMDb. Check uh, uh, Murder on the Orient Express. On the, uh, um, like, the trivia page. Wonder if anyone's done movies where Holmes and Poirot meet up? Probably not, because that would be two licenses. Yeah, maybe it was a stage actor then. Because, I don't know, I, like, it... I mean, I might be thinking of someone else when I'm thinking of Albert Finney here, but, um... I could have sworn I'd read some stuff about him being really nice. Howdy, Calador, how's it going? Cannot find anything about an in-person meeting, but Agatha Christie is apparently known to have thought Finney's mustache was too insubstantial to be Poirot's. Doesn't say if it was uh, said to him about him or even just written about him. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not that surprised that she wouldn't have been a huge fan of some of the uh, portrayals. Let's see. Not the classic cap. Only have the one face.
All right, and he's got a pair of suitcases to hold on to. So we've got our porter here. Each sleeper carriage has its own conductor to cater to our every need. I guess that's a uh, conductor. Okay. Go ahead and zoom in on him. So it does have the uh, classic train, Lego train uh, logo. It's very, very tiny. So the camera is not, I don't know that the camera is picking it up very well. But it's a circle with two arrows on it. That might be a, a, a Danish train symbol, but I do know that that has been a, a Lego train staple for the, like, I think the, the as long as they've been making minifig trains. It says conductor, so. So mind's eye, God's, Godsman, and sign of one merge. Well, when you when you start merging them, then I, I think that you're you're moving away from what they actually were originally. Yeah, unfortunately, the, uh, this camera doesn't have an autofocus on it. It's a uh, fixed, fixed length focus. Uh, let's see, we want that. Okay, or fixed focal length, I should say. No, I did. I just uh, haven't had a chance to uh, flip over to that Nadarogi eye. I mean, I've seen the movie. Let's see. Yeah, I, I think... Um, Ustinov is the one who I have felt was not uh, Poirot enough. should definitely be able to uh, get a building done tonight. They're, they're not that substantial. is on there. Uh, 
There we go. And that one gets on there. All right. Okay, next up, we have back here a maybe a wash basin. Not sure. Still kind of want the uh, Red Dragon in, but you also real salty about that whole fia fiasco. The lack of a, the, the gift with purchase. Yeah, eh. That's one reason why I like to order them rather than go to the, the stores and stuff, but. All right, so we got a gold uh, pneumatic T. I think they just, un like, underestimated the demand. I will say that that is a gift with purchase that would be pretty easy to uh, re like redo and re-release. So, all right, we need a another dark orange two by two, and we're gonna get a. Mirror on it. Right, right. That was one where it was actually better to go get it in stores. That's right. I forgot. We go. Mirror right by the uh oop. knock that in. Right by the uh, the sink. Looks like a long boat from this view. <laughs> and yet not as long as the uh the yellow delivery truck. Funnily enough. Now, there's a lot of Lego scalpers, and just across the board. And it really sucks. Oh, that is interesting. Okay. Dark orange. One by one plate, and one by one. By a threes, and a brown tooth. You know, speaking of wind, Bahamut, when I was a when I was a kid, uh, one of my very first D and D sessions, um, I went to someone's uh, an apartment that someone was, lived in. Um, I don't remember how high up it was, but um, like the wind hit the building just right. That while we were playing, it really did sound like a banshee's wail. It was pretty awesome. There we go. All right, so we got a little. Uh, Pretty neat little 
a cubby hole for with a sink and faucet and a mirror. Little corner corner sink thingy. Alt actually died that night. This is his purgatory. It's possible. It's possible. I mean, it just kind of reinforces that you guys are all uh, figments of my imagination. That would also explain some real-life things going on right now. You know? Alright, get that on there. Not Fig Newtons of my imagination? No, no. Okay, and then we have a car door. For a roll... For a, a tower, towel roll there. And gold one by twos, dark blue two by eight. Why would I imagine something like you? You wonder about about me? Well, you know, I mean, uh, I, I need to I need to keep people around me who uh, who entertain me. Cornflakes of my imagination. What did someone say? Cornflakes. Yeah, you entertain me. Of course you do. I have I have great viewers, you included. See, see, and 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 now you're asking about you know, you're 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 shocked that uh, you entertain me, Lil Bunny, and then you give me some more entertainment like that. <laughs> there a does not appear to be a mold mark on there. Yeah, he's in Alaska, hoarding all of the cold and snow from me. It's very mean. It's very mean. Okay, so we got the end part on there. There we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and get one down here. Don't sing a version of that uh, that John Mellencamp song, please. I, w I will make you suffer. <laughs> sky burial time. Woohoo, sky burial. What did I just say? I think you embody my saying. Um, 
All right, where is the mold mark on this one? There it is. Let's get that hidden. There it is. There we go. Okay, and then we get the other mirror sticker. goes right there. Okay. Alright, so, spare parts. We got a, a dark orange and a dark blue one by one plate, and a gold uh, pneumatic T as spare parts. All is nice. Okay. All right. Oop! Don't b bump the uh, the bar there. Okay, bag number thirteen here. I mean, you can dig permafrost, it's just harder. And not all of Alaska is going to be uh, permafrost anyway. It's definitely going to warm up enough in a lot of the... a lot of it. In the um, not-summer months. All right, so a bracket. We got the one by one curved top pie, uh, quarter dome pieces. Where is my two by two radar dish? Oh, radar dish, there it is. Okay, so get that on there for the sink. Gold one by one cylinder plate with top peg. I think that's for an ashtray kind of thing. Or it might be a, a soap dish. And then a car door for a, a towel hanging down. And another gold pneumatic T for the spigot. There we go. All right, let's see. Brown one by two and a bracket. Yeah, permafrost is um, generally like at least a few feet down, even you know, in in much of the the northern areas. Because it, permafrost is is permanently frozen, whereas the top bit is gonna um, 
always get warm enough to uh, to defrost. And that's even assuming that there's any permafrost where Bahamut lives. Which, I don't know, one way or the other. <laughs> Alright, where is the other... Dark orange. One by two. Round top piece, there it is. Pattern squares. Yeah, well, I I love uh, I love tile patterns in Lego. Ah, that is actually okay. So, yeah, having the um, the bracket there brings the round top piece to match up with the uh, the tile. That's nice. Uh, nothing else. Oh, okay. Gold, one by two, round end brick with, uh, two bars. One by one. One by one, and a side stud piece. Gold, one by two, with bar. Inverted half arch there. And then... A beige one by one plate with clip and a brown one by one plate. Yeah, I mean the tiling honestly is one of the many reasons why I, I do like the modular city sets. Because you always get wonderful tiling in those. Okay, two by two. Boat stud and brown. And that goes right there. Alright, gold one by six and some brackets. Curved top pieces. There is another one, there it is. Alright, one by two tile. There we go. And a one by four half tile. And a smaller uh, piece, Technic piece for uh, toilet paper, I think. Wait, I missed... Yes, I did. I missed a 1x2 plate up here. Dark orange. There we go. So yeah, I think that's uh, this is going to be a toilet here. Some panels. And a one by six. All right, there we go. And 
that is going to go right there. All right, so we got a basically a little uh, toilet compartment. Lego TP. You thought stepping on them hurt. First class cabins feature an ensuite bathroom with charming tile work. All right, three by three round end, two one by one clear plates. One by one cylinder plate with hollow stud and clear one by one cylinder tile with top peg. And that goes right there. Howdy, Vigus Tree. How's it going? Is the Lego and brick building category in... Uh, no, it was makers and crafting is what it was before. Which I think when they created it, they kind of intended that to be for like... Um, you know, people doing, like, woodworking and quilting and stuff like that. But it was the only thing appropriate for LEGO, and I think LEGO building streams have just, uh... Like, appeared enough that it made it worthwhile to make a new category. Alright, and a cupcake base for a little lamp. All right, so we got a nice little uh, countertop here, the decanter over there, and a teacup there, and a little lamp. All breaks out the table saw. All right, and now a couch. Go get that right there. And round top one by ones. It's a shame it's not a one by two, but I'll take what I can get. There we go. Alright, so this couch goes... Right there. Yep. Okay, and then on the... On the table... get a typewriter. There we go. I love the typewriter uh, um, tile slope print. Alright, next up, a 2 by 3 one by three, two by two. Okay, let's get some uh, dark red curve top pieces here. Just far too enchanted by that they have typewriters. Yeah, I love the typewriter uh, pieces. 
Like the way that they've done typewriters in the past and today is just always fun. Oops. That is a 1x3 tile, not a 1x3 with two studs. There we go. Feels like a very short bed. Remember the uh, computer pieces printed two by two slopes? I love those. Those are so good. Okay, and the bed goes right there. Okay, get that in there for the wall. And some one by two, three wall panel pieces. I mean, it might be a bed for hobbits. Hobbitses. Trans blue gem in there. And we got the lower quality sleeper cars here, or a cabin here. There it is, okay. That there, and that there, and a pillow, and we get a newspaper there. There we go. There we go, get that bed on there. How do you tell a halfling minifig from a child minifig? Um, actually, it would be the, uh, the way that the face is designed. If it has an adult minifig face print, then it's, uh, a halfling. Have I ever considered doing my own build? Uh, on stream, not really. It's not... It, it, it's kind of a, um... Like, the... It's not structured well enough, I think. Doing my own uh, building on, on stream. Um, I definitely might at some point, but it would probably be using the uh, studio program. Basically digital designer kind of thing. Before I put that on there. Yep, okay. Alright, we got the uh the gem light pieces. Like, the nice thing about a, a building stream of an actual set is that the set is done when the set is done. Like, there's no... You know, you're, you're, you're not... Um, tied to just 
kind of faffing about. Yeah, but I mean, if you have a large collection, um, building is actually kind of a production in terms of like, you've got a lot going on uh, part-wise and stuff like that. Like, I'd have to know what exactly I'm building first, and then get the uh, get the parts together for it. All right, let's see. That is... Yeah, all right. This might be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get on properly. Do not like round stickers. That looks pretty good. So that's basically a, um, like it's supposed to be a, a convex mirror. Con convex? Yeah, convex. All right. Then we get another bed. I mean, once I, like, designed something in LEGO Digital Designer, uh, its equivalent, then yeah, I could build it on stream by getting the parts together for it out of my collection, but... Otherwise, like, I would need so much space that I, like, I, I would need a, a, a streaming room as opposed to a streaming table for something like that. All right, so uh, on the, you know, on, on this sleeper cabin, we've got just, uh, you know, bunk beds there. And then this is the, uh, the full suite for, like, first class passengers. Could you make a working Hungry Hungry Hippos out of Lego? Uh... Yeah, probably it would not be as small as a regular Hungry Hungry Hippos. Yeah, that's a bed. It's a first class bed. Fold up table. I mean, I would be terrible at designing a Lego Hungry Hungry Hippos because I'm bad at Technic design. Alright, and then we have a backgammon game here. Nope. That is... Oh, then yeah. Yeah, I mean... Like, it's just lever action, and LEGO Technic's pretty good at lever action.
There we go. And a little lamp right there. And this goes right there. All right. All of those stickers are done. And spare parts. We got a clear one by one cylinder tile with top peg. A one by one gem piece. And then a trans light blue or trans blue gem as well. All right, bag number 14. Get some windows in here. Makes you wonder if there's a front gamut. There is, uh, but it was just never as successful. Um, it plays very differently. Um, because you actually have to uh, hit your your uh, enemy with the bo or your your opponent with the board, so it just it just makes a mess. Next stop, Bucharest. This vibrant city is our next stop. The Grand Boulevards bustle with activity. All right, starting out with on this side. One by two tile. One by eight tile. One by two tile over here. And another one by eight. How close has anyone here been to Bucharest? Uh, I've been to Denmark and traveled by train through Germany to France. Uh, it would be the closest I have personally been to Bucharest, which is not very close. to plates. There we go. And window. One by a three. window. Howdy, Minor Trader. How's it going? Alright, one by three plate. Another bracket. And one by one. Closest you've been to a Bucharest might be Indianapolis. <laughs> I need a uh, one by three plate there. I like traveling, I just can't afford it. Have an issue with the same computer again. Wi-Fi keeps disconnecting. Hardwired works, but it's inconvenient. Yeah, that's always annoying. That's one reason why I do prefer wired internet connections on my computers when I can.
My parents grew up with the uh, tradition of the uh, Great American Road Trip, so... Uh... It was... Whoop. Don't fall on the... Floor, please. So that's what... Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. That was, uh... That was my mother, uh... Who... Like, her family did the Great American Road Trips all the time for vacations. My father's family did not. But then, you know, when, when I was a kid, um, that did become something that my uh, parents did. My mother got my father into it. There we go. Right, got our windows on there. So because of that, I have, uh, I've been to all states except for five. I've not been to Alaska or Hawaii. I've also not been to anything in the Pacific Northwest. Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. Otherwise, otherwise I've been to every state. Although, to be fair, some of them are primarily traveling through them. And my mother uh, has an RV now, so it's like, she's constantly traveling. What did I do in Maine? Because you don't travel through that? I mean, you could travel through that if you're on your way to Canada. Um, which I did do, but I also, we, we did, we stopped at Acadia National Park. Howdy, Shield of Hope, how's it going? Maine isn't real. I'll I'll let my sister know that you said that. Uh, she lives there right now. Doing okay? That's excellent. window pane in there. One of the interesting things about uh, Maine was that you could get lobster in the McDonald's. That's that's one of the things that I found uh, fascinating. How did they get me out of uh, Wisconsin once I found the cheese? Well, it helps that I've only been to Wisconsin when I was a kid. Lobster used to be trash street food. There we go. Right, got our uh, windows on there. And we will go ahead and make the roof as well. And then we'll do minifigs. Passengers carry all sorts of luggage from artifacts to personal items. Some have a lot of luggage. I like how oysters used to be um, 
used to be commoner's food, like a workman's food and stuff like that. And then they overfished. And there we go. All right, so we got all of those. It's an interesting experiment. Just had your wife roll up her first ever D&D &D character, more so you could see how central casting marries up with 5th edition. Nice. You actually going to play with her, or were you just uh, doing that for the heck of it? Pop off the head. There we go. There we go. And she can have her umbrella. I did not know that uh, many figs could hold the umbrella right there, actually. And a handbag. Oh, you're discussing it. You have some 5th uh, edition learning to do since you've never played it before. Nice. Well, I hope if she decides to give it a try, she enjoys it. Alright, let me uh, zoom in on our fine lady here. I love the detail on the dress. Uh, it is the same torso and dress as in the Jazz Club, uh, which we have yet to build, but uh, we will have to build it to one of these days. But it's just a fantastic dress, and this kind of wrap piece was um, this is only the second one that they've made the other one was in the potter in the what series 25 I think the digital zoom makes it feel like watching an old soap opera yeah well Find me a better camera then. <laughs> quite, quite odd uh, assumption. That you're just wondering this your whole life. Could humans eat dog treats? Always wondered. Always wondered. Always wondered. Uh, they wouldn't taste good, but it's so. Um, a l the the first dog treats. Yes, yes. People could eat. Um, I don't know that they would taste good, but they're, they're all made with, they were all made with, uh, things that were edible to humans. I believe all dog food is legally supposed to be edible for humans. Oh, I did not know that myself. But the earliest dog treats were primarily for um, the wealthy, for their dogs. So they'd have been oftentimes getting better things than, uh, than people. Central casting works insanely well with 5th uh, edition. You just drop it in place and the uh, personality and background section of 5th uh, edition. Nice. That's awesome.
we go. Flip that around. There's a lot of uh, curved slopes. There we go. All right, one by eight plate. One by eight plate. Think of all the things you can do with those slopes. Oh yeah, oh, I know. They're good pieces. Let's see. Um, next up, these go right there and right. top pieces. There we go. Knock that down onto there, of course. All right, get you onto that. And then the other one. There we go. Quit auto-correcting words into other words. No, that's a fun thing. It's, it's fun when it's like, I read that as this weird thing. Have I been doing? Uh, okay. Doing a little bit better than I was before. We'll see how long that holds. That's the nature of uh, depression. It tends to be ups and downs, so... Might be doing okay now, and then next week not. But we shall see. And then another 2x2 two two and 1x1 one one cylinder plate. I also forgot this one over here. Okay. Alright, flip it over. All right. Ah, okay, we're not going to put the... Uh, the tiles on just yet. The right side, I didn't have to spend uh, a week with it. Well, no. No, I didn't.
Fancy tapestry, the sticker, one of the uh, stickers of the town square set is uh, like this tapestry with the castle at the top. Yeah, the, the, the tapestry sticker in that set is, uh, is really nice. I like it quite a bit. Almost as much as boot blacking. go get this on here okay all that's on all right uh, Paris Vienna Bucharest, and then Sofia. There we go. Paris, Vienna, Bucharest, and Istanbul. There we go. All right. And we will go ahead and... Can we even get her in here? Yes, there we go. Should be looking out the window. Get the uh, get the roof on there. So all we have uh, left on this one is the trucks, and then the engine. All right. So spare parts. We got a uh, one by one cylinder tile in gray, and a black one by one cylinder plate with under bar in black. Okay. So, let's go ahead and uh, put these to the side, because it is about time for us to do some minifigs. Okay. Starting out with Series 11. We're definitely getting close to the end of this set. Go ahead and get my dice ready. All right. Starting out with a, a D6. That is a 1. Uh, we'll roll a, a d10. Alright, that's 10, so the, uh, wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nope. I need to roll again. There's only 9. 6. Alright, number 6. Right, I need to get my uh, my sheets out. Forgot about those. There we go. All right, let's start a prediction. Can all guess what is inside the minifig box? No, not the box, the pack. Get your predictions in. Sorry, someone uh, messaged me. All right, so let's see. Uh, five for Bahamut. That would be the uh, Islander. That would be good. We do need that. 
One for Nadarogei, that would be the Barbarian. I'm not sure if there are any of him left. Bigastry 3, that would be the Lederhosen Lady. Uh, I got a 15, and that would be the Bobby, but I'm going to re-roll because I don't know if there's any of those left. Uh, I got a 15 again. 4. All right, that would be the Blacktron uh, minifig, which actually, uh, apparently, Blacktron is coming back next year. So, Seelan got a 1, that is the Barbarian. Uh, 4 for Isoven, that would also be the uh, Blacktron cyborg robot murderer thingy. So, a Minotaur Railway Investor and a, let's see, a Leonin Philonologist. All right, a few seconds remaining. Get your predictions in. Let me go ahead and get my timer ready. All right. Predictions are closed, and go. Let's see. What do we got? Is that, is that what I think it is? Yep. All right. 11.71. Uh, uh, that is going to be uh, number four, the Blacktron Robot Assassin. Yes, indeed it is. Which I think we got on Wednesday. Wife told your friend about uh, creating a character. Friend is now begging you to allow her to bring her D100. <laughs> yes, D100. Those can be fun, but weird. They they roll a little bit too much. Right. Uh, all right, so that was... 11.71. So let's see. Choose a prediction within 20 seconds. And who is getting the hams? Kalidor, Kinshir, and Bahamut getting the hams. Very nice. Lord Canis and Isoven going for 20 to 50. Shield of Hope going for 50 to 60. And Lel Bunny going for no. Nom 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 nom. Do not have any of number four. You do not have this one. Well, I mean, I got a, I got a few. This is, uh, I think, the fourth one. So if you uh, want one, uh, hit me up on Discord. Put the D100 in a uh, small clear sphere with water, so you can shake it about without <laughs> rolling it. Yeah, 140 ham profit, Vomit. Told her as long as it takes less than two minutes to come up with a number, you're good with it. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in on this guy. So no back print, but an interesting thing. Go ahead and uh, put him there, and we will mark that one. So that is four of that one that we have gotten. Oops. Zoom back out there. All right. So next up, series 14 for Spooky Season. All right, two, so we're going to that column again. Nope. Uh, I'm not sure how many there are, so let's take a seven. There we go. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven.
All right. Start the prediction. Can all guess what is inside the minifig pack? Get your predictions in. What can... Well, can I guess what is inside the minifig pack? Someone you know is interested in your hobbies. You mentioned D&D. He looked it up and uh, seemed interested. Ooh. Nice. Well, hopefully you can, a minor trader. All right, so six for not a rogue AI. That would be the fly. Uh, Brundlefly. Eight for Bahamut. That would be the zombie cheerleader. Three for Vigastry. That would be the mad scientist, which we've gotten all of those so far. Sealin 15. That would be Bigfoot, which we have not gotten. Need to get all of the monsters by Halloween. I mean, there's a lot of monsters. Isovan also got an eight. The zombie cheerleader. Leon in space tourist. Well, it needs to be a, a monster. These are the monsters. A Minotaur Train Museum Exhibit Acquisitions Expert. Well, that's not a monster. Get your predictions in. We've got less than a minute to go. You hear Katsumi's upstairs. Brundlefly is already meshed with his surroundings anyway. All right, so far, uh, we have only gotten the uh, zombie cheerleader the Fly, and the Mad Scientist. Uh, we've not gotten any of the others yet. All of this said except 13 Zombie Businessman. Wow. Go for it. What's the worst that can happen? The advice uh, you will give is to plan for no plan, because PCs will almost always find a way off the rails, be ready to improv, and ham it up. Exactly. And, like, whatever the PCs uh, plan... Uh, roll with that. Like, don't don't set out that you know, like they have to do X, Y, and Z to to complete the adventure, kind of thing. All right, predictions are closed. Go ahead and reset and go. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, 13.38. I believe we have uh, the skeleton costume guy. Let's find out. Yes. Yes, it is. All right. Perfect for uh, Halloween. So once again, that was one three 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 eight. One three three eight. I'm sorry. So within twenty seconds, complete the prediction. And Bahamut, Isovan, Vigastry, getting the hams there. Very nice. Kalidor and Lord Canis going for twenty to fifty. Shield of Hope going for fifty to sixty. And Kinshir and Lel Bunny going for no. Styles more meta as the uh, player actions may very well have repercussions somewhere else. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's that, but, like, the what I mean is, like, the players are there to uh, have fun and figure things out. Um, so, like, when the players come up with a plan, you know, it doesn't have to automatically work, but... Unless it's, like, really clearly absolutely no chance of success, like, hey, let's let's fight the Lich by just going to sleep. You know, okay, that plan is not going to work. <laughs> but when they come up with something that, you know, when they come up with something to do, eh, have a, a chance of working, you know? That's, that's my thing. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in on this guy. Oops. Such as, oh, they ignored this plot hook, so the uh, lieutenant didn't get saved, so the unit... Yeah, well, I mean, that's perfectly fine. I mean, there, there are consequences for the actions. So I love how this guy has uh, the... Like skeleton design. My only complaint is, 
Uh, no printing on the front of the leg? Like, why, why is the... Why, why is there only printing on the side of the leg for that? I would have liked printing on the, uh... Front of the leg, too. Yeah, D&D is a game. Have fun, yeah. And yeah, I love the trick-or-treat bucket. That is great. All right. So, let's go ahead and mark him off. There we go. And final minifig for the night is going to be a D&D minifig. So far, we have gotten, let's see, uh, one, two, oops, I did forget to mark off Zoss Tom last time. All right, so we've gotten three. We've gotten the Halfling Druid, the Elf Bard, and Zoss Tom. So once we get three, I'm going to move on to the uh, bottom register. All right, so 1d6. That is a four, so I'm going with the top. D10. That is a four again. So one, two, three, four. And let's go ahead and start the prediction. Can all guess what is inside the minifig box? Will I guess it correctly? Will I weigh it correctly, or will the die roll? Actually, it should be, uh, and I need to rechain, you know, change up that order a little bit. All right, let's get over to the weight guide. Here you were hoping to get a Bigfoot for the Orient Express. No, maybe next time. Philosopher noises. Howdy, Mad Martin. How's it going? So get your predictions in. Can I guess what is inside the minifig pack? Let's see. Uh, all right, so Seelan got a seven. That would be uh, Mad Martin. Six for Ice Oven. That would be the Aarakocra Bard. Uh, Bahamut also got a seven, so uh, Mad Martin again. Uh, three for Vigastry. That would be the Tiefling. Do do. Uh, 11 for not a rogue AI. That would be uh, Zoss Tom again. You can get it into D&D with three separate Discord things, and overall you have uh, five characters out of those campaigns. Ow. Last guess will uh, conjure up a correct p prediction. A Minotaur fantasy a locomotive designer and a Leonin movie actor. These aren't D&D. Get your predictions in. Can I guess what is inside the minifig pack? Will I get it correct with the guess? Will the die roll be correct? Let's bring out the uh, d12 ready to roll. Or uh, will the weight be correct? Or will all of them be wrong? There are some very closely uh, weighed minifigs. The Gith is uh, average of 18.51 and the Aarakocra is 18.53 and the Tiefling is 18.45. So those are all really, really close. Now, I, I had to get these weights myself with a separate um, case of these things. So, Alright. Let me go ahead and actually I do not need the timer. Predictions are closed, so let me get my scanner all ready. Okay. Scanner is ready. I I didn't actually say that. I meant if you went for something that was fairly typical fantasy, you would it would probably fit into D and D. There is a difference. I was very specific. All right. Okay, so let me go ahead and shake it. All right, well, I'm, there's definitely a head in there. Shocking.
Hmm. I'm gonna go with uh, Strahd because I I don't I don't actually know. No. All right. Uh, so let's roll the die. Uh, let me actually roll it so that it, it gets a roll rather than just falls. All right. So five. That would be the um, halfling druid, devotee of uh, Sheila Perry Royal. Did Strahd have a sword in the module? I don't know. I've never actually read uh, the original modules or the later ones. All right, 19.29. I mean, that is exactly what I have for Strahd. That is exactly what I have for Strahd. So, um, okay. Um... Saying the weight is Strahd. I'm really not. <laughs> That's I cannot believe it. If this is correct, and it might not be. No, it is. Oh my lord, I cannot believe that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the scan. Well, I, I did already uh I even got the scanner out, so. Yeah, Strahd von Zerovich. Even though I opened it. I was, I was excited to see if I was actually correct. I wanted to open it. All right. Well, there's going to be a lot of hands, hams going to uh, yes with guess. Let's complete that prediction. Let's see. Uh, Lord Canis... Bahamut and Vigastry. Uh Lord Kane is getting a twenty-five thousand hams out of that. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Seal and mortar and ice oven going for yes with weight. Uh, yes with die roll was uh, shield of hope and Lel bunny, and no was Kinshir and Kalidor. I I it's. I mean, it's skill, obviously. Wink, wink. Like, I thought I heard the, um... You know, this basically preventing too much from moving around. Uh, of things that have cloaks... Let's see. One, two, three, four. So... There's four things with cloaks. It, it didn't sound like there was enough for the uh, halfling. It seemed too rolly for um, the Lady of Pain. I figured like the the uh, headpiece would probably make a different sound. Um, I just didn't want to go for uh, Zoss Tom again, so I decided I might as well guess Strahd. So yeah. I guess I am pretty good. Nope, nope, this is the first Strahd. I got Zoss Tom last time. Let me actually uh, mark off. There we go. Go for him, uh, bearing his fangs. Uh, I guess he will be one who bears fangs at God. All right, Bahamut, have a, a good rest of your night. Thank you very much for coming on out. Into the into the ham hand. There we go. He's got a goblet. Should have some uh, some blood and a uh, a black uh, black rat with red eyes. That's a that's pretty cool. I like that. All right, let's get a zoom in here.
So a nicely detailed torso. Hard to see the back. If we get a second one, then I will show that off better. But adorable black rat with red eyes. Sword and goblet. Ready to slice someone open and then uh, drink their blood, you know. As you do. But that is our minifigs for the night. All right. So, that is that is our fourth minifig. If we get two more, then we'll go on to the lower register. But that is going to wrap us up for the night. So, I want to thank you guys for coming on out. Let me take a quick look to see if there is anyone uh, streaming. Uh, let's see. Uh, no one I know is uh, streaming Lego right now, so I think we'll uh, just call it. All right, I want to thank you guys for coming on out, and we will be back tomorrow for some more Spelljammer. We will be back on Monday for some more Xenoblade Chronicles 2. We will be back on Wednesday for some more Lego building, building something else. And uh, next Friday, we will return to finish up the Orient Express. I want to thank you guys for coming on out, and I shall see you next time. See you then, everyone.